Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to be experimenting with double exposure street photography. A lot of you enjoyed my video where I played around with intentional motion blur, and a lot of you shared some of your own work um, experimenting with that uh, technique, and it was really cool to see how many of you uh, test it out and play around with it yourselves. Today though, I want to play around with another technique that I don't really see used all that often within street photography, and that's multiple exposure or double exposure photography. There's a good chance you're just like me when it comes to multiple exposure photography. You've probably played around with it one or two times, found it to be you know, a little cliche and something you can easily overdo. And you know, you're probably right about that. And it's sort of what makes this a bit of a challenge for me today. I'll be honest, I never use double exposure photography. Um, and so it's gonna be a pretty big challenge for me to try something completely new. But you know, I'm not unfamiliar to the theme of, you know, using layers within your photos which is essentially what you're sort of doing with double exposure photography. You're taking, you know, one exposure and then layering it on top of a second exposure. I sort of do something similar in my own street photography where, you know, when I'm shooting through um, windows or reflections, I, I like to use that element of layering. It's not quite the same thing, but you know, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because I'm probably gonna be shooting two unrelated scenes and trying to make them work together. So this will be a big challenge, but I'm going to get myself a little bit inspired. And I did that just looking at some work of other photographers. And you know, just looking through the work, I found a few common themes I might want to be paying attention to when I'm out shooting. And one of those is looking for contrast and contrast within the subject matter that I'm photographing, a contrast in the light, um, shapes, if I'm shooting a bright scene and then a dark scene, different colors or a contrast in colors between the two exposures. I want to have some kind of contrast between the first exposure and the second exposure because if I don't, it could become a much more complicated or busier scene because you won't really tell the difference between the first exposure and the second exposure if there's not a lot of contrast between you know the two photos. So that's what I'm going to have to be looking out for. And I'm going to be using the XE4 and the X100V. Um, no particular reason other than I want to have the 53 millimeter focal length on the XE4 with that lens that I have. Both of these cameras, they shoot in camera multiple exposures. So you can find this going through the drive mode and then finding the advanced menu and then selecting multiple exposure. So the way this works on Fujifilm cameras is you'll take the first photo and you're going to get prompted with a question asking if you want to keep that photo, retry it, or exit out. So if you accept it, you'll be prompted to take the next photo and then you'll be asked the same question if you want to keep that second exposure, retry it, or close out. But yeah, that's how you do double exposures with Fujifilm cameras. So without further ado, let's get out and try this out. Got the XE4, X100V. We're gonna be shooting with both, um, but I'm gonna be starting off with the XE4 first. Oh man, my allergies are killing me. Thought motion blur was weird. This is even weirder. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I just took a picture of them walking towards me and then them walking away from me. I'm 
I'm gonna wait for that girl to cross the street. I already got a shot of her waiting to cross the street. <laughs> and then I'm gonna wait for her to cross the street. Give me a different pose. Hold on. <laughs> got you. Yeah, I got you in a multi I have it. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna look for more architecture stuff, and I kind of want to think in black and white. So I'm gonna switch to Acros again. It's also hard to see. So once you take a photo with first exposure, it's kind of hard to see or judge what you're, how you're exposing for the second shot. Since you have this like layered on top of your, your next shot, it's really hard to see if you're getting the correct exposure or even see what you're photographing in general. Let's see if you can see that. So I took one shot, now it's layered on top, and it's sort of like an overlay. I'm just gonna try to shoot there. Yeah. Okay. This is really difficult, trying to figure out, like once you take a photo or something, how are you going to approach the next exposure? It's, it's a lot harder than you think. You know, when we first started, I, I actually got some shots that actually worked well as double exposures, but yeah, I'm kind of veering off of that a bit, getting things that aren't really related to each other. I think that's key taking two photos of something that are related to each other, but you approach it differently. All right, we're gonna switch to the X100. B, not a battery on this guy. A lot of failure today, that's fine. So we're gonna go exactly how you think it's gonna go. There were a lot of photos I've had in mind that I have not gotten even close to getting. go back to Acros. I think the black and white is going to help um, kind of minimize the distractions or the dizziness. When you have less colors, <clears throat> you think more about the shapes and stuff that's happening around. So maybe you could work something here. Multi-exposure street photography. You never really do it. Maybe for a reason. But that's what we do on this channel. Try new things. And 
fail a lot. Okay, X100V, I think that's it for you. other ladies really enjoying the plants and I'm trying to make double exposures hmm. this technique of taking a picture of the same thing but like slightly adjusting how you compose the picture it works really well with minimal scenes like this or minimal architecture. You can make some pretty cool abstractions or patterns. Kind of like how that came out. Did I just delete it? No, okay. It's a good thing that uh, this place is closed right now. There's usually a guy with like a machine gun standing in the front. align or <laughs> you guys probably can't even see what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to align this picture together. Okay guys so I think that's gonna be it for the shooting. Um, yeah, <laughs> very, very interesting experience to say the least. Um, I'm gonna have to see how these pictures come out once I edit them and just look through them. I'll see you all back at home base um, and we'll do a little bit of review and overview of how this experience went, um, some takeaways and stuff like that. All right, so that wasn't a total failure. I actually really enjoyed some of the photos I got near the end um, in front of the Federal Bank Reserve. And I said it while I was out shooting, um, the, the abstract or minimal scenes worked really well with the multiple exposures because I could play around and make different abstractions and that's kind of what I did when I was there. This shot in particular was my favorite um, just because it looks like it's not a double exposure and I think that's why I like it. I think double exposures, when you look at them, and they're so obvious that they're double exposures. It's hard to look past the cliche of what it is, a double exposure. Um, and, and I think it's just too, it's too stylistic for street photography. You need to have a lot of intention in how you use the double exposure because you could take a photo of one scene that interests you, catches your eye, and how are you supposed to approach the second scene? It's a lot harder than you think and it doesn't really work well with normal, normal I say in quotes, but street style moments, candid moments, interactions that people are having on the street. It just doesn't really work all too well. But scenes like this where you're not really working with people or moments and you have a lot less um, stuff going on in the background. And I think this is where double exposures um, work well for me. Um, maybe you have a different kind of experience with this. One shot that I actually found to be pretty successful was the one of the first shots that I got, and that was of those three guys in the suits. They were approaching me, and I shot that as the first frame, and then waited for them to walk past me and got a shot of them walking away from me. I cropped it pretty heavily, but I kind of like how this ended up too. I mentioned before I went out to shoot that I wanted to be looking for a lot of contrast and contrast in subject matter was one of those things and I quickly found out that wasn't going to work out too well um, because when you have two scenes that are totally different from each other 
they don't overlap well as much as I thought they would. It kind of looks like an eight-year-old playing around in Photoshop for the first time. And, you know, and that was not what I wanted in these pictures. So I ended up approaching it um, a bit differently and shooting the same subject matter, but in a different perspective, I guess you would say. But yeah, it was still very weird to do. And I honestly don't think I'm gonna be doing this ever again. Uh, but what do you guys think? Does this really work well with street photography? Personally, I don't think so because, you know, like I said, you need to have a lot of intention behind it. So leave a comment below, like this video if you had fun, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet because a lot of you who are watching my videos, you're not subscribed to the channel. So do that and I will love you forever. Take care guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.